Okay folks, we are looking at part 6 on the trading plan development series and we're focusing on short-term trading in this example and obviously, you know, we're not going to be reinventing the wheel here. A lot of the concepts that I'll be discussing here are taught in previous teaching modules. Uh, I would counsel you to look at my short-term trading video module, uh, the Power 3 video module, how to capture explosive profits in the Forex market video module, and well, you'll you'll refer back to the optimal trade entry video module and maybe even the FIB concepts uh, video module may be uh, of help to you as well. But uh, let's take a look at the overall plan here. Okay, and we're looking at short-term trading plan, and the premise to this style of trading is we're going to be trading in sync with the market structure. And we're going to talk about market structure in this video module in a little bit more greater detail because um, I really want to dif differentiate it from market flow, okay? Because there is a difference in uh, what I mean when I say market flow and market structure, okay? Um, if there was one specific um, preference over trading with market flow or market structure, it would be market structure, okay? I learned it from Larry Williams, and I think uh, this will be more or less a, 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 a better treatise on the explanation on how I trade with it in this in this module. Alright, the duration of this style of trading is as low as intraday, entry and exit of the same day, to as little as uh, a few days. Um, anything greater than five days in a trade I would consider a swing trade. So five days or less uh, to me is a short-term trade. And the average pips in terms of uh, profit, we're aiming for 50 to 150 pips per trade. All right, so the buy signals, how do we arrive at uh, looking for buys? Well, we're going to be trading long in the observance of a bullish market maker profile. That's the fractal we're going to be highlighting in this video module. There's all types of fractals, all different styles of trading fractals. Okay, and fractals are simply a pattern that is infinitely visible, okay, in any time frame, up or down, okay? They're going to look a little bit different overall, but generally the, uh, the overall premise or pattern to it is universally the same. Okay, and you'll see what I mean by that when we look at the actual uh, market maker profile. Uh, we're, we're looking to find price patterns and confluences to support our trades in the direction of the market maker profile and market structure, those both being bullish. And we'll be utilizing the optimal trade entry for entry price and using FIB extensions for profits. Nothing new here guys, no, no reinventing the wheel here. Simple uh, concepts we've already talked about in previous video modules. Sell signals, obviously, much like everything else in my teaching, is just reverse everything. So if you look for the observance of a bearish market maker profile, the fractal, again, we're looking for, uh, with a bearish market structure. And we'll be looking for price patterns and confluences. And we'll be utilizing the optimal trade entry for our entry price and using FIB extensions 127, 162, and 200 for profit. Now, when we put uh, a trade on the risk we associate to each trade will be maximized at no greater than two percent per trade ideally I recommend one percent even in a demo account guys because you don't want the uh, the demoralizing effect of being wrong and seeing your equity erode even if it is a demo account uh, you're not no, you're not learning anything by losing money fast. Okay, trust me, I've done that a lot. <laughs> Early on, I've lost a lot of money. Okay, and I never learned anything from that. Okay, I learned from really learning to step back and lose money slowly. That's that. That's when you learn because when you quickly lose money and lots of it, you're you're so swamped with emotions. Okay, you can't think objectively, and you want to be able to lose money slowly and objectively look at what it is you're doing wrong and, and, and take a you know a step back and look at it if, you know, if you're losing seven eight twelve fifteen percent in one or two trades okay I've done that okay years and years ago I've, I've done that and I'm telling you you don't learn anything from that you actually will find <laughs> limitless reasons to get out of this and never do it and you never give yourself a chance so again can't stress it enough keep your risk very very small um, if you're brand new, absolutely brand new, uh, risk one half of one percent. How about that? Uh, it goes against what you thought is uh, um, logic, huh? You think you got to risk a whole lot of money? You don't. So if you're looking at uh, 
you know, a, a trading pro portfolio and, and you use these concepts or any other uh, trading concepts, obviously risk management is in the forefront of your mind as a trader, as a de even as a developing trader, because as a professional like myself, I, the first thing I care about is what am I going to risk, okay? What is my risk overall and how quickly can I remove the risk and go to break even? And then immediately looking beyond that point to lock in something. I want to get paid. Okay, I don't want to. I don't care about being right. I want to be paid. I know there's enough opportunities every single week. I can, I can harvest money from the market every week. Okay, and that's the mindset you need to adopt. There's no rush to get in. There is a rush to protect your assets and your and your equity. So there's where you rush. You rush to save money, and you move slowly when you're trying to make money. Okay, so that way you're controlling your drawdown. And for more information on that, obviously look at my handling drawdown and inevitable losses video module. Okay, uh, that's actually how I handle with the losing streaks. And yes, surprise, I have losing streaks. So you have to have that in your arsenal as well. So now taking a step back and looking at this, you're probably scratching your head. Well, wait a minute, this really isn't a trading plan. Well, that's for the guys that just started watching my videos, and they're looking at this saying, what does this even mean? For those that have been following me for a while and have digested the previous videos, and you understand what optimal trade entry is, you understand what specific price patterns we're talking about, you understand what confluences are, okay? You had a brief introduction to fractals with the optimal trade entries. We're going to learn a little bit more about that in here and what specifically a market maker does on, on all time frames to facilitate uh, trade. But it's not my goal here to break down every intricate detail that goes into making a specific short-term trading plan. And the reason why is because I don't know your personality. I don't know what framework you're building your trading on. And you'll understand more about what I mean by that when we actually break down the market maker profile because every one of these profiles is ambiguous. Okay, In other words, it can be viewed, even though I present it as a bullish market profile, you may hone in on one aspect of this specific fractal and you may say, well, this is a pattern I see clearly and I'll present it in this presentation as a buy model, but you may see the opportunities in there to sell, okay? And believe me, this will make much more sense when we start looking at it. But if that's what you see, that's how you trade, okay? And don't discount that, okay? And Rewind that for a second. If you're if you're listening to the playback, go back a couple seconds and hear that again. That specific aspect of this fractal pattern, if you specifically see the selling aspect of a buy model, that's your niche. That's your framework to start trading. Okay. All you need is a small little segment of the marketplace to be profitable. Okay, that's what you're doing this for. You're not in here to impress your wife. You're not in here to impress your husband, how smart you are. You don't want to go back to high school and say, you know, to your physics teachers, hey, look at this. You know, I told you I was going to amount to something. I'm, I'm a forex trader. Okay, that's not that's not your goal. Okay, and if it is, you know, prioritize. Make it back to getting profitability. Okay, keep the ego out of it. So, with all that, you know, I could go on and on and on here. Let's look at the actual market maker profile. Okay, this is the market maker profile for the buy model. Okay, and what this specifically is detailing here, and it looks rather elementary, it looks rather simplistic, but I assure you it's conceptually how I trade. Okay, this overall diagram is the basis on how I can anticipate price action, I can anticipate specific targets, I can anticipate reversals, I can ex anticipate continuations. I can anticipate pauses. I can anticipate price retesting previous support and resistance. Okay, everything that I do internally as a trader can be summarized with this very pattern right here. Okay. And basically the the concept is simply looking at how price in here okay you you find a resistance level. Okay, and in here this green box is delineating consolidation. This consolidation is essentially happening or occurring rather around a higher time frame hopefully 
nothing less than a one hour basis resistance level. Okay, so the top of this range in here really is assuming that we see a resistance level here. So while price is in this consolidation, as a, as a pattern trader, you would be hunting climax reversal types patterns, okay? Those being uh, MACD divergence, bearish, uh, type 1 bearish stochastic divergence, an ICT reflection, optimal trade entry, sell, okay? Turtle soup, sell, okay? So those types of patterns, okay, or a uh, hammer, or a lot of guys call them pin bars, okay, if you see that in the candlesticks up here that ended this implied resistance level, those are all patterns that you would look for, okay? So you have a resistance level here. You have a confluence of price pattern. That could be a candlestick like a bearish uh, hammer. It could be railroad tracks. It could be tweezers. Um, it could be a, a, a whole slew of different types of candlestick patterns, but associate that also with an ICT reflection, uh, an optimal trade entry in here, something else, and maybe even if you're going to be utilizing an indicator, I'm not stressing that here, but I know it's probably a foreign word to uh, purists, <laughs> but uh, if, if you can find something indicator-wise to support it also, eh, you know, it's just something else that you would you know, look to see what other traders may be factoring in to current market sentiment, okay? So obviously you'd be looking for something on the very short term in here as an overbought reading, maybe stochastics, RSI, whatever oscillator you use, Williams for Senar, anything that it is, um, you would be looking for an overbought reading in this in this you know, consolidation area. Now once market structure breaks down, Okay, and again, we're going to talk about market structure and go into greater detail and how I use it, but right now we're just giving a, a brief summary or an overview, if you will. Market structure breaks, it trades below the range low here. Okay, when we see that, we enter a new phase in the market profile. This red box delineates a new phase or segment of the overall pro profile. Now, the reason why it's red, okay, in case you're wondering, what's the deal with all these colors? Why? You know, why it's got to be specific colors? Well, to me, I'm on alert. Okay, this is a red alert type um, segment of this market profile or this fractal pattern that I'm looking at in price. Now, this overall price swing down to, to present a buying opportunity, this could be present on a one minute chart. Again, I do not trade with a one minute chart, but you can see this pattern unfold on a one minute. I, I look for it on a 5 minute, 15 minute, 1 hour, 4 hour, and daily. Okay, so by having those time frames, okay, and an understanding of higher time support resistance levels, when I see this pattern unfolding, it makes trading for me, and obviously when you understand how it works for yourself, makes it very easy to anticipate. Okay, and that's what you want as a trader. You want to be able to anticipate things, expect uh, specific things to unfold in price action, and then get yourself in sync with your anticipation of what price hopefully may do. But there's no guarantee that it's going to do that, so that's the reason why we use stop losses. So getting back to this box here, why is it red? Well, once we break out of this consolidation here, okay, and that specific price point, I'm anticipating a retest of this specific support level. Now broken, it's going to be hopefully a resistance point. Okay, so if price can trade back up into that point, I'm going to sell okay in here if I miss this opportunity so this here this high in here in this red box there are several patterns you can utilize for trading in here you can use a turtle soup sell pattern you could use an ICT reflection pattern you can use a type 2 trend following which is a higher stochastics overbought reading here comparable to this previous high here okay between this high and this high you'll see overbought readings on the stochastic but this reading here on this high in price, the stochastic will be even higher in terms of being overbought. So that's a type 2 trend following, or you may know it as a hidden divergence, okay, bearish. Um, but again, it's a Nick Van Nice uh, divergence. It's trend following in nature, and he dubbed it as a type 2 trend following. Or you could see uh, a type 1 bearish divergence in here on this little small little range in here as well. Or you could see an ICT grail which is an optimal trade entry from this high to the low in here, wherever it retraces up into. Um, it could be uh, a type 2 trend following with that optimal trade entry, which makes it an ICT grail pattern. 
Um, again, if you don't know what these things are, uh, I'm more or less driving you back to the previous uh, course videos, and it's in the high probability price patterns video. Okay, you'll learn all about those price patterns in that video module. Um, this red box here could also present you an ICT stinger sell signal, which is a optimal trade entry with a type true trend trend following bearish divergence within the second overbought reading here this will be a type 1 bearish divergence that's what an ICT stinger is so it's a type 1 within a type 2 with an optimal trade entry confluence at a uh, implied resistance level which would be here okay uh, now getting back to the reason why it's red I don't have to see it retest here okay so this area here this is the one that has a lot of ifs okay it could break out and never retest that okay on strong markets it'll just continue pause bear flag in here and then move lower going down into the implied support level okay so this area here it can retest I like to see that ideally but I don't necessarily have to have that okay now what does that mean for you as a trader in here on a short-term basis if you see this pattern unfolding over an hourly basis this could be as much as 30 pips or 50 pips here okay and you start seeing this pause in here and you know you probably got a good leg before it trades down into a higher time frame support level whoa what am I talking about selling short this is supposed to be a buy model yeah you see what I'm talking about if you see this price pattern unfolding in your charts okay and it's clear that you understand this leg is going down but you necessarily don't have the, the confidence needed to, to be buying bold face support levels here Okay, you, you would end up catching the buy maybe on this side here after the breakout and uh, the break in market structure, then a retest, and then maybe you're a good uh, candidate to be a buyer there, but not necessarily down here in the gray area. If you see this pattern as a sell, obviously don't be limited by buying this descriptions. Okay, to me, this is a buy model because I'm more focused on this higher time frame swing lower because the market's being engineered to go lower into a key support level that I would imply um, or expect rather to see price bounce down here assuming there's a higher time frame monthly weekly daily four hour one hour support level down here to anticipate a price movement higher now assuming that we saw price move out of this area here okay that's fine it goes down to the level we're anticipating a support level to be unfolding when we get to this area, this is the gray area, because we don't necessarily know that that support level is going to provide support at all. Okay, you may get a small little bounce, and this area here, this is where you can look to take first profit. Why is it blue? Okay, and why is this one blue? Because if you do buy down here on this support level, okay, that would be down here that we're assuming based on a higher time frame premise. Look at the range. Okay, you have this high to this low as price starts to move up okay if we start getting back to old support broken now resistance this could be an optimal trade entry to continue even lower so you want to take some profits here move your stop to break even okay and then have your remaining portion of the trade reach for what level here this one here now this in this specific point here you could see a type 2 trend following an optimal trade entry for an additional buy again okay bull flag in here rallies on up and in here between both these blue boxes or even the lows in here ICT stinger buys ICT grails okay type 2 trend following those patterns could be seen on the upside in here so that's how you hunt those okay anticipate those types of patterns forming on the impulse move up away from the higher time frame support level what's so specific about this area well go back to the range here's the high down to the low you want to be taking some profits here because you may be pulling up into an optimal trade entry based on this previous range here to here so why not take some off again but still leave that stop down here okay don't move the stop until we break out of this area here it's got to cancel out this optimal trade entry from this high to this low because this one here, the second little blue box here, this could be a continuation. Okay, and we're going to talk about that later on. It's a buy model that really is 
transforming or uh, mutates into a continuation lower okay and it'll be a trend following going lower and we'll talk about that again in greater detail I'll actually walk through it now as price goes on higher obviously this previous consolidation those participants that are higher time frame premise or position traders they're not going to be in a rush to lower stops down above this high or this high okay they're willing to sit back and allow price to retrace deeper but their stop loss order is going to be resting right above these highs that's where you take your profits on your short-term trading okay always look to take your profits on short-term trades at logical areas of stops okay any previous highs okay as price moves up look to take profits there because there's a pocket of liquidity that will offer many times outstanding areas to take profits now why do you take majority if not all your position off here because this could be a reversal and trade very very deep into the range between the low made here and the high here or the low here to the high here why sitting through all that drawdown without taking profit that doesn't make any sense to me okay this low here to this high that range it we could be deep we could pull deeper in terms of retracement and still overall trade higher okay so, but take some profits or here's the here's what could really happen you could take this position and see profit all up here and never take anything off and watch it come all the way down and trade in reverse completely against you that can happen guys I know it doesn't seem like like it could because we all want we want to be right but it's not about being right okay it's about being profitable all right let's look at a market maker sell model okay this one here this is actually how I learned this pattern I saw this pattern before I saw the buy model and it's because I my belief is I think the market is predisposed to go up everybody thinks buy and hold or you know and buy then sell it um, so to me you know, this pattern makes more sense to me but usually you see a consolidation at a support level price makes an impulse move up okay and comes back down doesn't have to finds old resistance broken now support and bull flags in here now you can get a type 2 trend following in here a lot of the continuation patterns we discussed earlier um, turtle soup false uh, previous low taken out uh, stop rate or sub, you know, something to that effect moving up into a higher time frame key resistance level okay so you're anticipating the consolidation to run up into a higher time frame resistance then a breakdown okay and then obviously a retest is what we're looking for okay but over here the focus is now going to be on are we seeing trend following signals like type 2 ICT stingers grails okay to imply continuation moving lower bear flags something of that nature because when market structure breaks in here and we're going to talk, take a look at examples of that we want to see lower prices because this area here will be an area of pockets of stops resting right below that that's what we're capitalizing on we want to get short at a resistance level but this is a gray area again we don't know with any great certainty or you know a surety really that this is going to be a high we're trading it with the anticipation that it will be based on a resistance level that we may see up here based on a monthly weekly daily four hour and nothing less than a one hour basis so this swing lower is what we're looking to capitalize on down into this area where we would run the previous consolidations area of stops okay now again going back to that same premise why don't I give you specific details on how to trade it with a specific plan conceptually you may see this as this area as a buy and this area to take your profits at or trail your stop loss at and then eventually get tagged out and that's your profit from maybe in the consolidation buying an optimal trade entry buy here or an ICT reflection in here or an SMT bullish divergence something that's a climax reversal could be uh, a reason to be getting long in here and this is your confirmation in here maybe you even bought this okay um, and then looking for it to move even higher you know this could be your trade you know this consolidation or pause to here or to consolidation beginning to end here this could be their whole trading uh, 
career. This is this one pattern, this one portion of the, the fractal. Um, just so you can see how it could be utilized. And again, I don't teach this and I don't advocate it, but just so you can see it, you could be a scalper and see a higher time frame resistance level like that. And then when price breaks down in here, these smaller little price swings inside this area here, using FIB extensions, you could be taking profits down here. And this could be your scalping career right here. Okay, you could be doing that once a day, and do and just be done. Make 10, 15, 20 pips, and be walking, you know, walking out the door. See you later. Again, I don't trade like that. I don't teach that, but I just want to show you the universalism to this pattern that's easily applied to all types of trading styles. But generally, we're looking for this area here to sell into a higher time frame resistance level, with this premise unfolding. Okay. The larger leg in price is going to be the high down to the low blowing out the previous consolidation. All right. Now, some of you probably already recognize this pattern that's seen my London Open uh, trading video uh, that I released a couple years ago, but I took down because I really wasn't pleased with the overall presentation of it. So I am revamping it, and that's what part seven is really highlighting. It's this, you know, the, the center folder flagship of that module my London Open um, tactics. But this area here, between here, this high, and this low, this is the lion's portion of the move, and this is a very easy aspect of this fractal. This this pattern, or leg of the pattern, is what we're looking for. Okay. Now, inside these red boxes, you could see type 2 trend following again, um, ICT reflections, uh, Continuation patterns of all sorts, okay, and obviously optimal trade entries from previous highs, retracing, okay, and every retracement should set up into another optimal trade entry going lower, reaching for this area of consolidation where underneath it will be resting stops, and again, we're looking to take profits at logical areas of where stop loss orders would be, okay. All right, market structure. Ooh, look at this. <laughs> it's not the best, obviously, but it will accomplish the means, I'm sure. When you're looking at price action, okay, it's probably easier, okay, and this is how I did it as well. Well, my computer, um, when I started utilizing uh, computer charting and not use paper charting, because I started as a commodity trader and actually, actually drew my bars vertically and put the little open tick to the left and closed tick to the right, and I did that for all the commodities I traded. And at the time, I was doing about 15 different markets, which was stupid because I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I had to be in everything. But um, I learned, hey, <laughs> I found out by taking a step back, okay, and looking at the charts on my uh, screen from across the room, I could see the price swings very easy that way. And it really was a, a, the premise that I was always too zoomed in. I need to be on that one minute chart. I need to be on that five minute chart because that's where the money's going to happen. And man, that's not how it works. Okay, so this depiction of market structure, hopefully, and if you don't see this, try that. Put your computer screen on and watch this video or watch your charts. Okay, and then sit across the room. Okay, and just look at it. Do you see the price swings on this chart? It's obviously not a price chart. It's a hand drawn uh, diagram that I've made in uh, just paint on the computer, okay, just for simple crude demonstration. But hopefully you can see the price swings. Here you have this leg up, then you have this leg down, a retracement, then you have the second leg lower, you have this price swing up, you have a retracement, then you have the second leg up, okay? Now looking at that, you can see peaks and troughs, highs and lows, Okay, and that looks more or less like this. Okay, you can see that we do have short-term highs and lows in the marketplace here, assuming this is a, a currency pair or a stock. Now, these little circles, okay, are essentially what we used to call ring highs and ring lows. Okay, and this is a premise I learned from Larry Williams. And whenever the market made a short-term high or low, that would be a low with two higher lows on both sides of it. So it's a three bar pattern. And whenever you had a high with a lower high on both sides of it, again, three bar pattern, that's a swing high. Whenever that appeared on our daily charts, we would make a little ring around it or circle it. 
okay and how those levels mapped out comparable to each other okay you can discern the overall trend of the marketplace without having trend lines on your chart without having moving averages on your chart without having any real anything just except for price price telling you what the trend is okay and because I'm a swing trader by nature this to me makes greater sense than having moving averages trend lines and looking for the picture perfect trend line or trend up or trend down they don't last like that guys and when you see it clearly as a trend it's over okay that's about when it's reversing or it's about to reverse soon so by looking at price in terms of swings okay that's what helped me as a trader taking small segments of the market and breaking it down incrementally modularly okay and in digesting it like that I learned that you could be very consistent in seeing where specific price moves up and down will unfold but looking at this chart here it's pretty obvious that these are short-term highs and lows but if you haven't already noticed there's other highs and lows here notice that we have the blue rings here okay these little areas are intermediate term highs and lows Ooh, sounds cool doesn't it well essentially what that means is, is you're, you have a high and now I'm assuming here that there was something on the other side here so again this is just a crude demonstration of what I see in the marketplace in terms of market structure uh, there's a lot of guys on YouTube talking about market structure uh, a lot of Forex quote unquote mentors talking about market structure, okay, but I don't think they utilize it in the capacity that I'm teaching here. And I'm not claiming originality here, guys. I'm all I'm doing is passing the uh you know the baton to you. I learned it from Larry Williams, one of the, the best traders there is in terms of uh price action. And you may see him as a price trader in terms of price patterns, but uh, you know his early works in terms of market structure and, and, and that nature man they're just timeless they are absolutely gems if you can get a hold of anything that Larry Williams did early on all his his books great things just get it looking at this overall crew diagram okay now by looking at it when you see a short-term high here with a high and a short-term high lower so in other words, you have a high here with a lower high on both sides of it. This is an intermediate term high. Okay. If you have a intermediate term high over here with an intermediate term high over here, this makes this a long term high. So intermediate term high and long term highs and lows, those are the specific swings in the marketplace that you're looking for. So having a market uh or chart rather noting all the swing highs and lows on a short-term basis it may seem daunting at first but by doing that you'll start seeing there's specific highs that are higher than two previous short-term highs again that being an intermediate term high if you see that intermediate term high with lower intermediate term highs on both sides of it that will classify that as a long-term high okay now as price breaks down okay and you start seeing intermediate term lows and then you have another intermediate term low if we break market structure at any time in here okay and that means breaking short short term highs and lows in here we break this short term high here now market structure is broken to the upside okay price comes down makes a low but it never breaks that long term or intermediate term low here it rallies up and again breaks its previous high here so we're breaking highs and maintaining higher lows okay do you see a trend line on this chart no you don't need them okay do you see a moving average on this chart no you don't need them okay so as price starts to break highs in here you see market structure being bullish eventually at some point you'll see the intermediate term high here formed now look here is the, the main thing I want you to see if you missed this getting long 
and you miss this opportunity to get long in sync with it. If you see an intermediate term high, take out a previous intermediate term high, is market structure bullish or bearish? It's bullish. Okay? It's bullish. So even though you'll start seeing these short-term lows and highs in here, and I think this is what gets everybody confused. They say, okay, well, market flow has broken to the downside here. So now I'm only going to be looking to be a seller. Why? 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 What, what, what are you thinking? That's not as important as the overall market structure. Market flow is going to go up and down all the time, depending upon whatever time frame you're looking at. If this is a daily chart, okay, this being a bearish market flow here, that's fine if you're a day trader. You might you know, see it trade lower, but generally you're in a bullish market environment because this intermediate term high broke above a previous intermediate term high. So the trend, okay, is bullish. The market structure is bullish. I would expect to see expansion to the upside, okay, or another new leg up. What do you mean by that? Well, what's the previous leg? Well, here's the intermediate term high. Where's the intermediate term low or long term low prior to it? Down here. So I'd be utilizing this swing from this low to this high. At some point when the market makes a low that's tradable, okay, I would look for that same price movement from this high to this low in terms of range. I would add it to whatever that buying point is to the upside. Okay, and that would give me give me my uh, measured move type of uh, analysis. Okay. So even though we'd start seeing all these little uh, short-term lows breaking and, and it looks like market flow, which is not what I'm teaching here, I'm teaching market structure, okay, because that to me is much more significant, much more stronger in terms of analysis. That break above an intermediate term high here, that to me is significant because now even though we see a retracement, all that's going to be is a, a low to that intermediate term high, as it retraces, what's it going to do? It's going to retrace down to an optimal trade entry, and I'm going to buy that. And once it has its first impulse off of that, if I missed it, the first retracement there, that's where I'm buying for an optimal trade entry. So this is how you start anticipating, okay, these fractal patterns to unfold, okay, these buy and sell models on the market maker profile, okay, because you'll start seeing these things unfold with this premise in mind, okay. So we've hopefully arrived at where we determine a bullish or bearish market structure, okay? All right, we are looking at a mountain. <laughs> and it's not a mountain, guys. This is depicting a rather crude overall swing high, okay, or an upswing in the marketplace, okay, that we would utilize for going short. Okay, because our belief as professional traders using technical analysis and price action, price action is engineered to go up first to go down. Okay, so price goes up to go down, and then price goes down to go up. Looking at this crude depiction of a market swing up, if you add to that levels of predetermined key support and resistance levels, okay, in other words, you would anticipate, okay, you're going to anticipate at some point over here, price may rally up. But as price rallies up, okay, if we have a bullish market structure, think now. If price is trading around in this area here, if price is at this point bullish on the market structure, and this is a key support resistance level, okay, if price is going up to it, do we anticipate price to trade here and trade lower, or do we anticipate price breaking that and coming back to it and finding support? Hopefully the latter, okay? The higher time frame premise is going to have more weight. So if we are looking for bullish prices, we're going to have more influence or expectation, rather, on seeing support and resistance levels being broken to the upside and eventually coming back and finding support. So these levels, we would have more credibility established on the fact that it's going to break as resistance, but then come back and find it as support. Same thing here. As price rallies up through this level here, we expect it to give way on the upside, but then find likely support here later on. 
okay, if it trades back to it. Same thing as we're trading up to these resistance levels, we can anticipate price giving way as broken resistance, but will lend support, okay? Again, we get to a higher time frame key resistance level, okay? When we see this, this may be a very higher time frame daily, weekly, monthly, okay? Or it could be a big figure on top of it. It could be a monthly high on top of a key resistance level. A lot of factors overlapping this specific price point, making it a key level. We would anticipate the reversal here. And then obviously, with that expectation, we would anticipate the support levels to start breaking down. And then once they're broken, we would anticipate those support levels to be more influential in price in terms of resistance. Okay, and again, going lower, this level here, we wouldn't see it give way as support, break it, and will permit price to come back to it, but lend and anticipate it to be as resistance. As price moves lower again, we wouldn't see support be broken, but we would be comfortable with it being retested as resistance and then trading lower, obviously, into our objectives. So what does that really look like in terms of price swings with that same model? Well, here's a crude example, obviously. We'd see price straight up to these levels, maybe even offer very, very short-term resistance, and that was what we expect, okay? But we're really anticipating price to break through these levels as price moves higher. We'll permit price to find support there. But being cognizant to the fact that price is not going to always stop on a dime, allowing slipping through our predetermined levels. Now, when price does that, this creates new shorter term support resistance levels. So while these may be higher time frame support resistance levels, respectively, as price moves and gyrates between these levels, it's going to create new support resistance levels on the lower time frame. So they're going to be useful to us in terms of short term trading. And obviously the better signals will, will build around the higher time frame support resistance levels, but don't be afraid to take trades in sync with the overall model, okay, or direction, if it provides it, even if it's on a shorter term. So in other words, if this is a daily, okay, these short term lows in here could be traded on a one hour, 15 minute basis, and surely with a five minute chart, okay, getting in sync with the higher time frame surge up into a higher time frame key resistance level, and then slide lower on the, on the other side of this fractal. Okay, so again, as price starts to break down over here, market structure is broken, you can get your standard optimal trade entry bearish patterns, okay, and you want to start seeing these levels provide you resistance, okay, and if it trades it to it as support, it should be very short term, very little momentum up. Okay, that's what you're looking for. The key is you want to see very little bounce to the upside. That's your clue that the levels are going to break down as support, but will be more influential as resistance on this side, much in the same capacity on the reverse. As price was moving up here, the, these levels will provide very short-term resistance, but eventually give way, but be very influential in terms of finding support. much in the same capacity of looking for price swings higher for selling. Uh, dips in the marketplace obviously are no different, just simply reversing the rules. Assuming that we do have key support levels, okay, these being noted here, same premise in mind that as price was moving lower, we're expecting these levels to break away. And if price trades back to them, again, they should lend resistance as price trades down into a higher time frame key support level down here. We would anticipate that re reversal here, okay, and this would be an ideal indication to apply the market maker profile for buying, okay, the buy model. And as price moves up higher, obviously the resistance should be broken, but permitting price to come back to it and find support. Again, looking for price to break through, but allowing price to come back and find support. This is the overall price swing down, okay? And the concept that I use for support and resistance and how I measure or anticipate a specific price level. And if it's an overall profile that's bullish, I'm gonna look for resistance to provide support more than resistance, okay? And I'm looking for uh, confirmation in that in terms of price action. What does that look like? What a, 
crude depiction of price. Obviously, it looks like this. Um, the levels providing short-term support, but giving way, coming back, finding resistance, but permitting slipping, not expecting price to always stop on a dime. And looking for, obviously, all these levels to give way, but looking for more in terms of these levels as resistance than they are as support. Then the higher time frame support level causing the reversal. This would be the market maker profile for the buy. And then obviously looking for upside, breaking all the levels as hopefully the market provides little to no resistance, but lending at these predetermined levels on a higher time frame, monthly, weekly, daily, four hour, and one hour, nothing less than a one hour. Uh, those levels that would be clearly discernible in those higher time frames to provide support for price. Okay, we are looking at the Australian dollar. This is a daily chart. Okay, and some of you that were at the webinar that I did with uh, Mr. Chris Laurie, um, we did a uh, webinar together, and I highlighted this very level here, the 101.50 on the Australian dollar. And before we uh, build on this uh, example, I just want to clearly discern, and this is a, this is a real quick rehash of what was discovered in that uh, presentation. If you use this low here and the high here, this red line here is essentially around the 50% mark or level of the range between this high and this low. And it is a mid-figure point. In other words, it's a 50 level, 101.50. This area here is where we'd anticipate an opportunity to get long in here, or a buy. Okay, so we're going to use this whole thing in terms of price action, this small little sampling, okay, to how you utilize this market maker profile in not just the buying scenario, but we're also going to look at how it could be utilized in that small little segment of price action, how you could be a seller as well. All right, we are looking at this specific area in price, okay? This little gray box is going to delineate the very nature of a market maker profile. We're going to talk about how using this reversal scenario, okay, because that's what this is um, being taught here. I'm not teaching you trend following short-term trading like the short-term trading video module does. Okay, I omitted the reversal, okay, or pure support resistance plays, okay, that's many times very difficult for a lot of traders to do. It's easy to trade with the trend, and I, I teach that first because it's easy to do. Uh, this type of trading takes a little bit more finesse. Um, it takes a lot of confidence in your ability to read price uh, and understand what key support resistance levels are. But obviously looking at the daily chart, um, the 101.50 level, and the fact that it was in a midpoint of that big large range and just put a 101.50 level on your chart and just study how many times it has been support resistance over the last uh, number of years really and you'll quickly discern that that is a key support resistance level so we're going to drill down into this small little box here okay essentially and break this whole thing down and utilize the market maker profile in the Australian dollar All right, inside that gray box, there's a smaller little range. This small little range is where all of the busy bees were doing all their work. Busy bees, in this analogy, is the smart money. Now, the smart money will accumulate during consolidations, okay? And here's what I want you to think for a moment. Imagine smart money, the central banks and the big dealers, okay, the guys that are the movers and shakers in the marketplace, okay? If this entity that we're going to quote-unquote call smart money, okay, they are the big dogs. They're the big players in the industry. We're going to more or less think of them as a Tyrannosaurus Rex, okay? They're the big dinosaur, okay, that is the carnivore of all carnivores. They're, they are it, okay? Apex predators by definition, if this big dinosaur, okay, wants to jump in the pool, all right, and the pool being the marketplace, 
let's assume for a moment the dinosaur <laughs> is smart money because it's so big, okay? It's so huge in terms of its ability to move the marketplace. If this dinosaur, smart money, jumps into the, um, the pool, what's going to happen? It's going to be a huge reaction to the water, okay? And number one, the water level is going to rise up quickly, okay? And it's going to make a big impact, okay? A big splash in the market. You see that in price action, okay? If there's a lot of buying during a consolidation and price moves up out of that, okay, and it moves quickly, this dinosaur, okay, knows that it can't buy a lot and not move the market, okay? It's going to create a demand. So if it wants to assume a position, but it wants to get an average price, okay, in other words, smart money wants to get involved here, okay, it sees value here. It'll buy some, but because it buys it and starts large quantities and creates a short-term demand for it, okay, it will wane off its buying and allow price to move back to a more favorable point, okay, or equilibrium, okay, and they'll buy a little bit more, okay, and as they buy, it'll rally up even more. Now, they don't want to draw too much attention, and they don't really want to see price move too far away what their average hopeful price would be, okay? So they're looking at price eventually moving lower, okay? As it moves back lower into that same consolidation area, this specific point is where they're going to accumulate more of that same position. Okay, so they're that dinosaur wanting to get in the pool, so they're going to go in that water one leg at a time, slowly but surely putting themselves in that water. Now, by doing that, Yes, the water level will rise. It'll rise up quickly at first, but then it'll wait for the waves to settle, smooth out a little bit, and then it'll start to put its new leg in, okay, and then slow, lower in its body. And eventually, once it's down to its shoulder length, the market will be all up here, okay? And at that point, everybody in the market will say, wait a minute, this is a bullish market. Let's get in here and start buying it. So we don't want to be buying when it's obvious, okay? We want to be getting in there when that, Tyrannosaurus Rex is lowering one leg at a time in, and we'll know it, okay, we'll know it when it happens, when it starts to move up out of the consolidation. We know that that large entity we know and call smart money is on the move. It's doing something, because the public's not going to make a rally up like that, okay? Only institutional level trading is going to move price, same way it does here there's going to be an absence of interest on the buying aspect of the market. So if the institutions are not willing to buy, okay, what's going to happen? Price is going to fall out of bed. And if they do selling in here, it's going to cause capitulation, which is what you see here as well. But price trades down into this higher time frame 10150 level. And I have a smaller short-term uh, level here, but we're not, we're not going to talk about that here. We're just going to focus on that 10150 level. So we have a higher time frame support level. And then prices inside of this range, okay, we would expect accumulation to be unfolding. Now, again, we don't know who smart money is. We just know that the smart money entity itself is going to most likely work its way in the marketplace here because it, we're at a higher time frame support level. So as price starts to break up out of here, okay, this area sets the stage for what? We want to see the market maker profile we're going to start seeing the characteristics that these market maker profiles provide for us in terms of anticipation in terms of price action. So let's go in and look at this specific segment of the marketplace. Again, this is the Australian dollar. Okay, and we're drilled in to October 7th and 8th. Okay, and here's that area where we sold off. So we had a consolidation in here. Price broke down, moved into another consolidation at that higher time frame 10150 key support level. Price inside this consolidation, it moved up out of it. Okay, and this was the first indication that we had smart money enter the marketplace. Okay, without looking at all this information over here, because we're going to come back to that in a little while, this price action here is very, very symmetrical. Okay, in other words, there's a lot of symmetry to how price is moving in here. It's nothing that you can't see on your own after some study, but what do you want to uh, what do you want to focus on here is the nature of the buy model. Okay? I want you to look in this example 
and find the buy model. Can you see that buy model in this uh, small area of price? I'll give you a moment to look at it. Okay, then looking at price action, okay, again, focusing on this area here, this is your sell model. Do you see in that same example in terms of price action, do you see an example of where that sell model can be found in this small segment of, my, of price action? Again, I'll give you a moment or two to see if you can find it. And I'm going to give you examples of it, so don't worry if you can't see it, because it's just an exercise of observation. Okay. And now looking at this example in price, when we see the market maker profile setting up, and we're going to give, again, very clear examples inside this segment of price, you can anticipate what's going to most likely unfold. Again, it's no guarantee that when you see these things, it's going to happen exactly to script. But to me, this is how you know I look like you know an ace in the videos because I'm calling specific price swings and you know, specific levels before they happen. Now, again, looking at price here, if you're looking at price here, okay, I'm going to put a little hint here to you. This area here is an area where that profile unfolds. Can you see it now? Again, I'm going I'm to give you a greater detail example. But do you see this little consolidation here? Think of this consolidation as that. Okay, And this little area here is this pause in price. Doesn't look like much of a pause here, but it was. And then rallies up makes the high here. So at the zenith of this price move, I'm sorry, this price move here, this zenith is here in the in the profile model. Then we saw price slip down as market structure breaks, which is what happens here. Then you have the optimal trade entry here, and then price slides lower, taking out the low or the previous consolidation here as noted here. Okay? So inside of this area of opportunity, there's a, a good chunk of pips that you could very easily harvest intraday. Okay, not necessarily uh, a long portion of uh, uh, time. It's just still an opportunity for you to take a short-term trade. Looking at this example, okay, where is the market maker profile for the buy? This area here is this consolidation. This pause in here is this area right here. Notice how it didn't get back up to that area like I was stating before. It was too weak. There was no there was no demand for it. So if there's no demand, there's going to be a lot of supply. So supply is going to come in, sell that off, and even greater, move down into a higher time frame support level, and we move into another consolidation, which sets the tone for the market to be in this stage here. Okay, now we're hunting a reaction in the marketplace right here. So as price moves up out of it, which is what we see here, price comes down, retest it like we like to see here. And that's this area right here. And then price moves up, which is what you see here, makes the uh, pullback in here. And you see that here. Now, price fails to go above this high here. Okay, so it doesn't get above here. So this is why you want to take profits at logical areas, which is here and here. Again, being here and here. Okay, because you're working within what range? This high to this low. So this could be an area of opportunity to take profits. And obviously here, because if you look at this high to this high, you're in the 79 cent tracement level. Okay, and as price started to rally again, it failed and moved lower. Okay, remember I was talking about how between this high and this low in the module for the buying, uh, price at this point 
okay when it starts to go higher it may not get up to this level here it may come back and retrace into the range between this low and whatever high it formed here and you see that forming here from the low and the consolidation up to the high all we do is retrace deeper and what that does is allow the market makers to take out the stops that are on the right side of the marketplace okay and retraces from this low to this high and you find optimal trade entry at the 62 percent retracement level and then price starts to resume and move even higher okay so now take a step back okay and if you if you can't see it on the five minute chart like this let's take a look at it on a 15 minute basis okay we're zoomed out a little bit more thinking in terms of that same buy model okay watch what happens we're using that same 15 minute chart now we have that first consolidation up here we have the gray area down here where the buy should take place right here we have price now move up and now this is what this is that pattern right here but if you're zoomed in on a five minute we expected to see it here but now we're looking at a 15 minute suddenly the fractal can be seen on a higher time frame still the same price segment moving okay higher but we're not seeing it to the to the same uh, unfolding that we saw in the five minute we are expecting to see it trade down here and then move up and while this was profitable yes okay we didn't see what was uh, unfolding on the 15 minute because we were in too tight now suddenly this consolidation and then move lower down to a key support level 10150 to run up and then trade back down into this area here is exactly what you see here okay so the market makers were using the 15 minute time frame to do their dealing okay so watch what happens price rallies up here okay and then gives you that other retracement deep here okay and it rallies on up to do what to take out the previous consolidation where the stops are resting right here and that's what they do here they clear out the stops okay so you see how this model gives you the ability to anticipate price action and swings in the marketplace okay now if it's not clear to you I understand it's going to take some examples and some time used to looking for it and you look at hindsight examples for a period of time and it may take months to get the perspective on seeing it okay but when you see it you can't ever forget it it's there it's just going to be in, embedded in your brain now looking at this example here okay this is that one example I mentioned earlier that I was going to give you a, a greater refined uh, example of it we have this area consolidation price runs up out of it there's a little pause here it makes the zenith breaks down comes up gives the optimal trade entry and then falls out of bed where does it go below the previous consolidation so what do you think module that is the market maker sell model look at the profile here okay you can see that they have the consolidation here which is here the move up and the pause in here here the zenith of the move right here which is here the breakdown and the optimal trade entry in here which is what you see here and then the move lower to get below the previous consolidation as noted here okay just between this high and a move below the low here that's rather handsome in terms of a very short-term trade I mean you can take 40 pips out of the marketplace rather easily here okay so now let's take a look at again that consolidation what specifically is different about this market maker profile that isn't as seen in the previous ones okay because overall inside this higher time frame market maker profile okay notice that we had that consolidation out here and in the higher time frame uh, fractal moving higher so this is a bullish scenario overall remember that 15 minute chart we just looked at but within that larger 15 minute market maker profile or that fractal pattern that's bullish we just pulled out a bearish sell model so again that's the reason why I don't give you specific entry pattern concepts to trade 
you know, on a short term because it's so dynamic. When I give you this, for instance, looking at the cell model here, you may just see the buying aspect. Okay, you may see just the, here's the optimal trade entry to get long. We're in a nested optimal trade entry here. So I'm going to buy that. So you're, you're using this profile to be long in here or long in here to get this as your profit objective. And maybe your mind doesn't understand to get to this point here, you know, this could be the sell. Okay, and that's fine. It's all about profitability. It's not about being right. Okay, and when you trade fractals, okay, it's a lot of freedom, but there's a lot of rules too. Okay, so it's a freestyle way of trading without bias, really, if you think about it. And that's the nature of short-term trading. You can work within a bullish market environment and be a bear. But you have to understand what you're doing. And it takes a little bit of finesse, okay? But if you look at just the bullish market structure and trade bullish market maker profiles, it makes trading very, very easy. And if you just understand the sell model for the buying portion of that fractal, which is here, here or here, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. That's your short turning short-term trading niche okay so that's what you would utilize for your trading okay we just looked at an example okay and how the market maker profile on the short term inside of a larger higher time frame fractal appears to fail okay but what it's doing is actually it's giving you a continuation of the larger profile Okay, and let's look at what that means. Assume we have a support level here, and price moves from that specific point and breaks market structure. Okay, so when we have market structure break like this, this will give us the indication, hopefully, to anticipate higher prices. And when higher prices, hopefully, come on their way, now we have the green light go looking for, now, anything that retraces from this point, we're looking to hunt an optimal trade entry to go long. And when you have that, okay, you're, you're, you're going to see price meander and it's going to move. Okay, you come back to your charts and, and it looks a little different and it's fine. And this is the part of trading that's hard because you have to wait for the setups. And every time you come back to your charts, it's going to look a little bit different. Okay, but you're stalking, you're setting up. Okay, now note, looking at this chart here, we have our higher time frame support level, but now also we have new support resistance levels you have to factor in. Okay, and because support resistance is never ex uh, you know, exact, it's not right to the pip, you allow for certain slippage. But if you're waiting for retracements, retracements don't always go back to the levels. Okay, retracements will be a little bit early, and this is where you can use the double O50 optimal trade entry levels okay double O fifty that means using the big figures and the mid figures to pull your fibs from and using the swings okay and I'm not teaching that here I'm gonna counsel you to go back to the other videos and learn about that but looking at price obviously you can see price did in fact snap up from an optimal trade entry okay and now looking at this okay you would expect to see price do what move inside of a cell model okay so you're expecting price to find its zenith in here and start to break down lower looking for what looking for that lower low than the previous consolidation or beginning of the price move up so this overall price swing we're looking for it to move down here but if you're in a higher time frame bullish scenario within bullish market structure or a, a more higher time frame bullish market maker profile you're gonna look at this area here to see where price may form a new buy in other words in bullish environments the sell model won't come all the way down here it's just going to give you a higher time frame retracement on the overall swing here okay and what that looks like is this you have price come back down and you see price come all the way from its zenith Okay, which you anticipate if you're just looking at the model in itself, looking at how price moves lower, you're not expecting that lower low. So as price starts to move lower, if we're in a bullish environment, we're not looking to see price move back below 
this consolidation. We're going to expect price to come back down and maybe retest this support level or work within this optimal trade entry range here or this optimal trade entry range here and maybe even factor maybe pivots maybe a trinity level oh how about that we didn't talk about that yet have we so then you would be looking for your implied support levels to be a factor in this retracement as it pulls back into a deeper uh, price swing and by having that expectation as price starts to move into these support resistance levels again we're going to have more emphasis uh, placed on this than looking for the previous low here taken out for stops because the smart money's assumed a position back here okay they're going to defend that price action as price starts to come back down here they're going to accumulate more of that same position here it's counterproductive for them to come back all the way down here okay when they're trying to get price you know higher or at least maintain a specific price level so that's why we see these um, overall declines deep retracements within a bullish market environment because you're seeing more accumulation unfold by the smart money and what that looks like obviously is a continuation and you see the expectancy of a retracement to a support level and then a bounce and right here if you miss the opportunity to get the support level okay you can see a smaller short-term optimal trade entry forming in here and you can utilize that as your entry for short-term trading to get in sync with the higher time frame market maker profile okay this could be uh, a five minute uh, price action and basing your trade on the idea that you're on a one hour or four hour market maker profile that's bullish and by seeing that unfold then you would see obviously price move on higher uh, this is the range that you'd be utilizing here the low to high this uh, confluence may be a 62 it could be a sweet spot it could be a 79 certain tracement level there could be pivots in here there could be a trinity level in here uh, there's a lot of factors in here but and obviously looking at previous lows is the, the key because they're going to take price all the way down to run an old low for stops but not necessarily the beginning or consolidation of the overall price swing up okay so this price swing up is going to be a continuation and move higher and overall by looking at price in that respect you can see just looking at this this is a very rather generic depiction of price action but it really is uh, seen a lot of times when you are in a bullish market environment in other words if price is overall bullish this is the type of uh, price action you end up seeing higher highs and higher lows how about that? No necessity for a trend line. Obviously, the same thing can be said on the reverse, looking at a key resistance level like this. Uh, during the consolidation, you would expect to see price eventually move to a point where it breaks market structure. And that looks like this here. And it's the market maker st uh, market structure shift, rather. And we would be looking for price action to do what? Move down into a market maker profile for a buy. Okay, so because we're trading from a key resistance level, we're trading lower, okay, and eventually trading down into a key resistance support level. Okay, in other words, we're expecting price to eventually move. So every time we come back to our charts, we're seeing the expectancy of what? We're waiting for it to trade down to a support level. Okay, and as price starts to move back to new levels of resistance, we anticipate price to react accordingly but doesn't necessarily have to trade back to it okay again as we retrace we're looking at what price move from a high down to this low so we have a new range price can come up necessarily uh, fall short of this okay and you see this probably in your own trading many many times where price fails to get back to that point but in terms of the range okay we went back to a 62 79 or maybe the mid uh, midpoint 70.5 sweet spot that I use for my optimal trade entry and eventually sells off but in here this could be a reflection pattern this could be a turtle soup okay it could be type 2 trend following of that nature okay and you can use this buy model that would be hunting initially okay as an area just to get short in the marketplace but as price starts to move down and we trade into what would be considered a higher time frame support level Okay, we would anticipate price bouncing and you start to see the early works of an optimal trade entry in here. Okay, so you could be a buyer here with the expectancy of the market maker profile buy model unfolding.
And as price starts to move up, okay, one would expect to see what? Well, looking at price action, you would expect to see higher prices moving even even further up. But if you're thinking just in terms of this buy model and not taking into consideration the fact that this could be the uh, retracement here for an overall continuation lower, we have a buy model that's going to mutate into a continuation for a sell-off and continue lower. Okay, so you always have to be cognizant of that happening. And that's why we always use the previous range. Okay, so looking at that, you have this high and this low prices retracing into this, into that. Okay, um, that could be an optimal trade entry that could be unfolding inside of your expected price move. So even though price cancel that, we go back up into a higher time frame resistance level. But now we have this range still to consider, this high to this low. We're at 60 to 79% retracement in terms of that range. Okay, so even though we would be hunting this buy model, okay, market maker profile, we still have to be cognizant of how this may unfold into into a trend following uh, continuation lower. And by that, you would see price start to give optimal trade entries in here on a lower time frame and it starts to break down. And this is the reason why we have to take profits because simply taking a position, assuming it back here at an area of key support resistance, with the expectancy of the price moving up into uh, an old consolidation to run stops, that's too myopic. You have to have the 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 the, the ability to accept the fact that you're probably going to be wrong. Okay, and you're always wrong until you take profit. Okay, so if you see price start to break down like this, obviously you're going to wish you had taken profits, but you know sometimes that's too late. So overall, looking at how the Australian dollar moves on a five-minute basis, you can see how this area here is delineating the range, and this is obviously the low at 101.48, but the key level we were watching was 101.50. So inside this consolidation, the smart money was accumulating, and price moved up, and then came back down and retrusted uh, this broken resistance now as support. And then all in here, they continue to work within a higher time frame buy model where price eventually moved higher. On an hourly basis, you can see how the Australian dollar traded within that same area of price. Okay, now look at how that 101.50 level reacted on an hourly basis. Okay, so far we've only looked at a 5 and 15 minute chart. On an hourly basis, look what unfolded eventually. Price eventually moved up, okay, retested, traded up to 102.46, came down, gave another buying opportunity, okay, and then rallied up and then came back deep like we were just talking about earlier, okay, and this retest of uh, this old range that we had, initial accumulation, they took it back down to that specific point, gave another optimal trade entry, okay, and then rallied up even higher, and then eventually took out this previous consolidation area. So this is that buy model come to fruition. Okay, so over 200 and some pips, okay, offered here as a short-term trader. Okay, if you were uh, looking for that type of trade. But this is the area that we called for in terms of uh, short-term trading. I did a video previous to uh, all the price action unfolding as it did here. And again, I'd counsel you to take a look at chrislaurie.com and go into his uh, video archive section and the webinar we did together is archived there. You can see uh, the analysis that was done as well. Looking at obviously the daily in terms of what it looked like, all of this price action in here is what was called. Okay, so over the period of a few days, okay, you know, uh, uh, over a hundred and some pips obviously, but eventually moving to the point of over two hundred and some pips. Now, if you're looking at this video module and you're wondering, this looks nothing like the short-term trading video module you did, Mike, where you talk about the 18 and the 40 moving averages. Right. <laughs> you're right. Because there's a difference. Okay, there's short-term trend trading, which is what that video module talked about. And then there is climax reversal short-term trading. And this is what that... Uh, premise was in this teaching model, module um, talking about how looking for reversals at 
resistance and support levels is what we focused here. Notice how the low here that we were targeting based on trading the market maker profiles during that specific time the moving averages were saying what? Get short. Okay. But support and resistance trumps everything. So when you see that type of event unfold, obviously the moving averages are lagging. Okay. But price action is not. It's leading. Okay. So getting in here long and in the very next day getting long here as well, waiting for uh, higher prices, you can actually see the market maker profile here on a daily chart because is that what we're looking at here here's the range in here here's the breakout of that range the big Tyrannosaurus Rex jumped in the pool okay and it sat still for a moment and waited for price to get stabilized again and then it put its next leg in started putting more of its body in and then price eventually moved higher and I can tell you the price has actually moved even higher than this since this particular low here as well so uh, we were very fortunate enough to have a very good example of price action in the Australian dollar and I was very pleased to be able to share that uh, beforehand in video recording and targeting of the specific price levels where I thought price was going to trade to and uh, be able to share that with uh, Chris Laurie as well in a webinar so hopefully this has been very insightful to you and it gives you some framework to utilize some of your short-term trading and where to apply specific price patterns and and how to use that in uh, your arsenal for short-term trading um, put some thought into uh, how you're going to be a trader um, you can use either one of the buy or sell module and if you look at that fractal pattern again if you just understand part of the fractal and you can make a career just on that so in a buy module and you just see the sell aspect of it that's all you need, okay? Because remember, you can build a career on 50 pips a week.